It's very interesting to know about the Verbund concept in BASF. If uh, you could uh, elaborate a bit more. The Verbund concept of um, BASF is a real competitive advantage for us. Basically, the way it works is many companies in our industry, they put plants all over the place, right? So intralogistics for them is not intralogistics. It's actually normal logistics going between sites. They do a lot of transport. They have a lot of waste from one factory. They can't use it at other factories. Our factories and plants are connected by pipelines. And A, we don't need a whole lot of intralogistics, so we save money on the logistics. It's great for sustainability in the environment because we have virtually no waste. Every waste product of one plant is usually as a raw material uh, used in the next plant. Our We Create Chemistry strategy um, will require us to be much, much closer to our customers. So you can't put these big integrated networks of factories next to every customer, right? So you build smaller, more agile facilities. In North America, the consumer likes a softer seat. And in Germany, we like a firmer seat. That's a different chemical recipe. And so if you have a factory right close to your customer and you can produce those different recipes, you don't have a lot of line switching costs, but also a much deeper understanding of the customer you get when you're able to position your people right near to the customer's facilities. You mentioned that the biggest challenge is the, the volatility and the complexity of the market. Uh, how you manage complexity versus a process or a standardized process? Of course, you have to have a synergetic logistics operation. So you have to have an efficient operation that's highly effective. But on the other hand, our strategy sees that we would treat customers buying agricultural chemicals or chemicals for the cosmetic space very different from those, let's say, buying bulk plastics chemicals. That's built in. The differentiation across those businesses is built in, but it's on top of a highly efficient and effective platform which has deeply harmonized processes. When you began your transformation, is there any successful existing model to rely on? If not, how do you figure out the right way to transform your company? The unique thing about BSF in this transformation program is this was a lot of creation of the ideas ourselves, a lot of um, integration concepts that are specific to our company, specific to our situation, and our market position. So uh, we're not a fast follower and we couldn't copy concepts. We had to create them ourselves. So what are the challenges uh, BASF need to face in the future? And uh, what are the warning sig signals do you think BASF need to pay attention to? BASF's been around for well over, almost 150 years. I mean, we've been around for well over 100 years, right? Mm -hmm. But there are new competitors out there who are also very good. Uh, let's just look to Asia. Um, let's look at Reliance, Sabic, these are partners, these are customers, but these are also competitors. And we need to constantly improve to make sure um, that we stay ahead of the pack. You spoke a lot about leadership in your presentation, and I want to know what leadership looks like at BASF, especially considering how analytical the company is. We take an analytical approach, but there's a lot of emotional intelligence um, in the how we deal with each other. The how being leadership behaviors, the what being you need to understand your industry, you need to understand your marketplace, you need to understand your function in the company, and that combined, that's how we um, train our leaders. You say BASF is a very stable company and has very good growth projections in the future, but I want to know what keeps you up at night. Yeah, that's really simple. <laughs> you know, my colleagues by 2020 will produce and sell 115 billion in revenue, right? So at the end of 2012, I'll just say somewhere between 75 and 80 billion. Um, somebody has to deliver all that stuff. That would be us. Somebody has to keep the IT lights running. Um, we do it all ourselves. IT constantly has to be there. There can be no major outages of standard services like data analytics. And to be honest with you, the, the most important thing, especially in the supply chain logistics area, just safety of the employees. You know, we have a lot of warehouses, we have a lot of moving parts, looking after safety as top of mind and not just as the next topic um, is our right to operate. We know that BASF has been innovating in sustainability. Do you believe uh, companies will move towards that direction on their own or do you believe there will, uh, it will be necessary some regulation? You know it's always a mix of both. Um, 
I think if you look at BSF, sustainability is not something new. It's something that we've looked after for decades. We're a big planet Earth. A lot of countries on this planet. Governments need to look after their populations. Regulation belongs to that. And BSF embraces that. We work with the regulators. Um, very open. We look at sustainability, though, also probably differently than many companies in the sense that we look at it in, embedded into our product development cycles, right? Right into our innovation and research and development projects. It's not just, okay, we've developed these products, what happens with sustainability? It's, it's looked at at every step in the value chain. I would like to know how you did to design the supply chain strategy of BAF and align it with the business strategy, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, even when BAF is a multinational company with activities all around the world. When we did the BSF Group supply chain strategy, we just did it the old fashioned way. We consulted every one of those operating divisions. We consulted every one of those strategic business units. We bring that all together in the supply chain strategy that my division is responsible for. And then of course, we connect that into those roughly 80 SBU strategies. We had teams sit down and say, okay, what is the right supply chain strategy for your business, for your customer base, and then how do we, as a logistics unit or as a supply chain management team, how do we support you the best? Well, thank you guys for interviewing me. I really appreciate it. And I wish each and every one of you good luck in your careers. Yeah.